The How to Train Your Dragon trilogy has become absolutely legendary. As the films were released over nine years, many younger people grew up watching them, maturing with its characters. And for older audiences, the visuals, the character arcs and the humour are unparalleled in the genre. The trilogy holds a special place in the hearts of many, but you cannot talk about How to Train Your Dragon without discussing the music. There are epic tracks with rousing percussion and brass, and on the other hand there are delicate, wholesome little tunes, and every melody is an earworm. The soundtracks to the trilogy are some of the most beloved film scores of recent times. So how does John Powell make this music so memorable? Powell is a master at building a unique sound palette. Sound palettes or soundscapes describe the overall style, colours and characteristics of a film's soundtrack. Think of it this way, a painter may choose warmer or brighter colours when depicting uplifting and heartwarming themes, compared to colder or darker colours for sombre or dismal themes. Similarly, a film score composer uses different instruments, techniques, mixing styles and so on to create a soundtrack suited to the mood of the film. John Powell was instructed by the producers to go all out on the score and not to worry about being too loud or too brash. And so he went ahead and blew the audience away with pure epicness. The score calls for 60 string players, 12 French horns, six trombones, four bass drums, an anvil, and the list just goes on. When you listen to tracks such as With Love Comes a Great Waterfall, You're simply showered with awe-inspiring explosions of harmony. The source of energy and intensity is not solely from the number of musicians though, it's also from his careful use of instrumentation. Powell injects energy into his scores through the use of the human voice and heavy percussion. These are two of the most ancient modes of musical expression, and Powell taps into our vestigial primitiveness, invoking an emotional response to the music. In fact, he himself describes the use of voice as instant humanity. Meanwhile, the track Hiccup Confronts Drago perfectly captures the barbarism of the villain Drago through this chaotic and violent drumming. No! Let me show you. Ah! Ah! Another contributor to this soundtrack's epicness is the reverberating huge low brass. This might remind us of Hans Zimmer's notorious scores Inception and the Batman trilogy. In fact, Powell worked in Zimmer's studio earlier in his career and no doubt learnt a lot about huge epic percussion from the master. In How to Train Your Dragon, Powell employs a myriad of more atypical instruments, from the tin whistle to the bagpipes, the hurdy-gurdy to the slate marimba. This folky, rustic sound palette adds another layer of detail to the fantasy world of How to Train Your Dragon giving the films more character and making them more immersive, believable and memorable. Zimmer's influence on Powell's epic sound is evident, but when you listen to the How to Train Your Dragon soundtracks, another film music giants may come to mind. John Williams. And as a side note, these two composers have also collaborated together in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Both of these composers produce amazing, hummable and memorable melodies. Powell skillfully creates and develops leitmotifs in How to Train Your Dragon, as Williams has in Star Wars. Leitmotifs are short, musical themes which connect themselves to a specific character, place, concept or object in a story. For example, whenever a character appears in the story, their leitmotiv will probably be heard. This technique was popularised by Richard Wagner in his 19th century operas, but it's now found all over film music. Many fantasy films tend to be very heavy in their usage of leitmotifs. The Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, or yes, How to Train Your Dragon. For example, in How to Train Your Dragon, this theme could be attributed to Toothless. This theme features across dozens of moments in the trilogy, in hugely variated forms, sometimes in the minor key, slowed to half-time speed, while other times it might be used more subtly. Here, the violin plays a recurring motive derived from a fragment of Toothless's theme.
Essentially, we become familiar with the main themes of the soundtrack through sheer repeated exposure. Moreover, as you might find in a leitmotiv-rich opera, Powell fills the opening few minutes of each film with an overture track, re-familiarizing us with the old leitmotifs and introducing us to new ones. Pentatonicism is quite possibly the most underrated secret ingredient to the success and memorability of Powell's How to Train Your Dragon soundtracks. Pentatonic scales are scales constructed of five notes. These scales lack dissonant semitones, so it's easy to construct docile melodies with little tension from these scales. You can construct a pentatonic scale with any five adjacent notes on the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is formed by stacking perfect fifths in a sequence. For example, a fifth up from C is G, a fifth up from that is D, and so on. The resulting cycle is an incredibly valuable tool that musicians from all genres use to construct harmonic progressions. Folk melodies from around the world are often derived from pentatonic scales. Gaelic, African and Asian music all make use of pentatonicism. And the fact that this same system developed independently in so many drastically different cultures suggests that pentatonicism is inherently intuitive to the human ear. When you think about it, before written music existed, for folk tunes to be passed on to posterity, they needed to be memorable and reproducible. And so it wouldn't be preposterous to suggest that pentatonic melodies are simply more catchy. In fact, if you look at the 10 most viewed pop songs on YouTube, eight of them are based mostly on pentatonic scales. Gangnam Style is one exception, but that one has barely any melody. And the other exception is Despacito, which is a Latin pop style and is set apart from the other songs. Of course, non-pentatonic melodies can be memorable. There just seems to be something intuitive and natural about the sequence of notes in a pentatonic scale. And so perhaps Powell's use of pentatonicism is an underrated secret ingredient to achieving memorability. If you look at the list of leitmotifs from the first film, we see that five of the nine main themes are pentatonic. However, pentatonicism is employed less in the sequels. Only four of the 12 themes are pentatonic in this list. Director Dean de Blois feedback to Powell's compositions would often be, I like where it's going, I just wish I could walk out of here tapping my foot and humming it. Pentatonicism is used throughout all three of the films, and while the latter two films do become darker and more mature in tone, the more folky melodies from these films remain pentatonic. For example, if you look at For the Dancing and the Dreaming, which is sung by Hiccup's parents in the second film, as well as the tunes accompanying Toothless's courting folk dance in the third film, you will hear that they are pentatonic. Interestingly, this isn't the only time that Powell has ventured into the world of pentatonicism using an array of instruments beyond the traditional orchestra. The Kung Fu Panda soundtrack, which was a collaborative effort of Powell and Zimmer, has many similarities to How to Train Your Dragon. There is a distinct sound palette with the use of traditional Chinese instruments like the Erhu and Guzheng. Leitmotifs are used, and more importantly, many of the themes are pentatonic. The instantly recognizable track Ugwe Ascends is derived from a pentatonic scale. Again, this soundtrack was very successful, popular, and memorable. Pentatonicism contributes to How to Train Your Dragon's success not only through the crafting of a unique sound palette, but also through the direct creation of memorable melodies. Additionally, the use of leitmotifs meant that themes were often repeated, which made them stick in our minds. However, of course, a film soundtrack is in symbiosis with other elements like the plot, the photography, the acting, and so on. The memorability of the music is somewhat dependent on the memorability of these other elements of the film. And boy, does the rest of How to Train Your Dragon deliver. If you're new to this channel, I've got loads of videos on symphonic music and film music. You should definitely check out some of those. You can support this channel on Patreon and there's some links in the description for musicians who want to take their skills and passion a whole lot further. Thanks for watching.